Good morning. Happy Labor Day. As we turn to Proverbs chapters 13 and 14 today, verse 26 of chapter 14, in the fear of the Lord there is strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. Now we're continuing in part two of Proverbs, looking at these contrasting uh, Proverbs of Solomon. Verse 1, chapter 13, a wise son heeds his father's instruction. Now here's the contrast but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. Now, uh, looking at this first verse, the immediate focus is on the wise son. I mean, who doesn't want a a son who listens to wise counsel and makes good choices? We all want that. But what we sometimes skip over in this this proverb is, what about the father? Are, are, Are fathers providing this godly advice and instruction to their children? In Ephesians chapter six, When Paul's talking about the family, and particularly he's talking to the fathers, he says this, Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the admonition of the Lord. Look, that's really contrasting two things. Don't bring them up in wrath. Don't provoke them to wrath, but bring them up in the admonition of the Lord. So does that mean you shouldn't spank them so they don't get angry? No, what it's talking about is fathers who are who fail to be actively involved in the lives of their children, instructing them in the ways of the Lord, often leave their children wounded and angry because they're not involved in their lives. Now, the children don't necessarily know how to articulate that, but they feel a sense of rejection. That makes them angry. You know, we have a lot of angry young men today, and it goes back to the fathers not giving instruction to their children. All right, verse 2. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. He who guards his mouth preserves his life. But he, here's the contrast, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. You know what? Our words matter. They can bring life and well-being, or they can bring death and destruction. Verse 4, the soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Again, we see that contrast. And, and by the way, here's a news flash on this Labor Day. Lazy never did anything. Drop down to verse 10. By pride comes nothing but strife, but with the well-advised is wisdom. You know, the, the know-it-all is in constant conflict where, where constant conflict where the wise is willing to learn and be instructed. Wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished, but he who gathers by labor will increase. The Lord loves labor. You know, he wants us to work. He wants us to be productive. Others benefit from that. And we take care of ourselves and our families. Verse 13, he who despises the word will be destroyed, but he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. I mean, this is really kind of what Proverbs are all about. Now look at verse 18. Poverty and shame will come to him who disdains correction, but he who regards rebuke will be honored. Be humble, be teachable, be successful. Verse 20, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Again, a contrast. Birds of a feather flock together. Verse 21, evil pursues sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. Now, some people would claim that this is uh, a karma. You know, I've heard that term karma from Eastern religions. Like, this is the way God created the world. You know, evil, if we do evil, it's going to pursue us. It's going to catch up with you. Evil will catch up with you. It's what God says. He he can command a blessing. The blessing will overtake us. Or a curse if we reject him, and the curse will catch up with us. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. So how? Well, first, a good man, a man of an excellent spirit, he plans. All right. He knows his days are limited, and therefore he plans accordingly. The sinner ignores this reality, and he refuses to plan, and what he has as a result is given over to the righteous. Verse 23, much food is in the fallow ground of the poor, and for a lack of justice there is waste. Now, the potential is there, but for a lack of justice it's not realized. This is the exploitation of the working poor, and the Word makes it very clear that that is wrong. And we see that happening today in our own culture. It's wrong. Verse 24, he who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. Now this is is back where we started. We'll come full circle in this first chapter. The role of the family is to discipline and train their children in both word 
indeed. The rod that it talks about here is a device of correction, like a shepherd's rod. Now, punishment is something we need to understand. Punishment is different than correction. The goal of correction is to keep one from punishment. Right? We, when, we, when we're talking about correcting our children, that's correction, that's discipline. We're wanting them to do the right thing. Verse 25, the righteous eats to the satisfying of his soul, but the stomach of the wicked shall be in want. This doesn't sound like the message, uh, I mean, this sounds like the message of, uh, of, of, of Matthew. Chapter 6, verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. The righteous eats to the satisfying of his soul. We seek God. We'll have what we need and we'll be satisfied. Set your eyes upon God and gain everything else in between us and him. Verse 1 of chapter 14. The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. Now the wise woman is the Proverbs 31 woman that we're going to look at in greater detail later when we get to chapter 31. Verse 2. He who walks in his uprightness fears the Lord, but he who is perverse in his ways despises him. Now look at the contrast here, the one who fears God, who lives uprightly. That's what it means by fearing God, reverence him, his word. The one who despises God, well, he lives perversely. Verse 3, in the mouth of the fool is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise will preserve them. You know, again, Proverbs has a lot to say about our mouths, about our words, about what we say. Words matter. Verse 4, where no oxen are, the trough is clean, but much increase comes by the strength of the ox. This is... This is really kind of among my favorite Proverbs. You know, the way of saying this is there's not milk where there's no manure. You know, you got to take, the, the, there, there's some, when, when you want the good, there, there's a little work that comes with it. The strength of the ox, but you got to clean up behind the ox. It's required. All right, go from the presence of a foolish man when you do not perceive in him the lips of knowledge. Now, this is echoing what we saw over in chapter 13, verse 20. He who walks with wise men will be wise. Look, watch who you hang out with. You know, just watch who you're hanging out with. Now, this, this is different. So I say, well, I thought we're supposed to, to, uh, to, to, to interact with the world and share the gospel. Absolutely. We need to be interacting with the world. We're not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Okay? Um, but it's not who we hang around with. It's not who we fellowship with. It's not who we seek counsel from. We need to be in the world, but not of the world. So this is saying don't, don't, you know, don't hang out with it. Don't be influenced by those who lack wisdom, the foolish. Verse 8, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. We need to, the, the prudent man is going to, to, to map out his course. He's tr going to, to, to constantly seek direction from God and understand all that's around him and, and plan his way. Verse 11, the house of the wicked will be overthrown, but the tent of the upright will flourish. I, I notice this here, the house of the wicked versus the tent of the upright. You would think it would be the house that would last, but it is the upright character that brings lasting significance, whether it's in a tent or some other temporal being. Our, our, this, home, this earth is not our home. Right? We're, we're pilgrims passing through. Verse 12, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. This goes back to Proverbs chapter 3. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, that is God, and he shall direct your paths. Verse 14. The backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. Verse 14. The simp the, verse 15. The simple believes every word, but the prudent considers well his steps. I mean, this is, this is how the infomercial world makes money. If it's too good to be true, guess what? It's too good to be true. A wise man fears and departs from evil, but a fool rages and is self-confident. A wise man reverences God by obeying him, and as a result of that, that obedience to God, he departs from evil. A quick-tempered man acts foolishly, and a man of wicked intentions is hated. Verse 20, the poor man is hated by his own neighbor, but the rich has many friends. He who despises his neighbor sins, but he who has mercy on the poor, happy, is he. There, there is more to come on this topic, but suffice it to say that God is not a respecter of persons, nor should we be. Verse 23, in all labor there is profit. 
all right? In all labor there is profit, but idle chatter leads only to poverty. Talk is cheap, but it's also costly. Like, uh, just like faith without works, it's dead. Talk without actions leads to poverty. Verse 26, in the fear of the Lord there is strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. The fear of the Lord is a strong tower of safety. Again, we talk about the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is reverencing the Lord. What does that mean? That means we're listening and we're obeying. And that is a place of safety. Verse 28, in the multitude of people is a king's honor, but in the lack of people is the downfall of the prince. He who slow, is slow to wrath is, has great understanding, but he who is impulsive exalts folly. Watch out for those who have short fuses. Verse 30, a sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. He who oppresses the poor reproaches his maker, but he who honors him, that is, who honors God, has mercy on the needy. So the topic of how we treat the poor is revisited here, as I mentioned a moment ago. Verse 32, the wicked is banished in his wickedness, but the righteous has a refuge in his death. Wisdom rests in the heart of him who has understanding, but what is in the heart of fools is made known. You know, the person who has understanding and wisdom is rarely the one talking. Verse 34, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Father, thank you for your word. And uh, Lord, we're just grateful uh, for the Holy Spirit, our teacher. And we continue to look to you for, for guidance as we go through this journey of your word that you would speak to us. Lord, that we would come in alignment with your word, that we would fear you, meaning we would obey you. That, Lord, that we might have the refuge, the safety, the protection that comes from walking with confidence, knowing that we're living life as you have designed it. Lord, thank you for this day as we celebrate labor, the opportunity we have to work to provide for our families. And I pray, Lord, for those that might be seeking work, uh, Lord, that you would give them those opportunities. And Lord, may we be grateful for everything that you have done for us. May we set our eyes upon you. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me this morning. Until next time, keep standing on the Word.